Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin, sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa qa'idina wa qurrati uyunina sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين إن شاء الله today in uh, we will we will talk about the second wife of سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أم المؤمنين السيدة سودة بنت زمعة رضي الله عنها and I would like to mention that uh, all the sessions um, and it will be just a few a few words. And we cannot cover uh, the whole character of uh, the uh, uh, mothers of the believers, but we will talk just briefly uh, about what we uh, we can cover inshallah. So a Sayyida uh, Ummul Mu'mineen Sauda bin Tuzam'a here uh, Sauda bin Tuzam'a bin Tuzam'a ibn Qais ibn Abdi Shams. So she is from Quraysh from uh, uh, Bani Amir ibn Lu'ay. So here the uh, she she is really وسلم, and um, she is Khadija radiyallahu anha. Her mom is Ash-Shammuz bintu Qais ibn Zayd ibn Amr. And uh, her mom is from uh, Bani Adi ibn Najjar, uh, which are the, uh, the people of uh, the uh, uncles of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, this uh, honorable, uh, mashallah, uh, mother of the believers, she was uh, married uh, to her cousin, As-Sakran ibn Amr. And the name might not be familiar, but we know a very familiar name uh, of his brother, Suhail ibn Amr. And we all know that Suhail ibn Amr was very sharp. He was very wise in taking decisions. He was very smart at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sauda radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her. Uh, she, she became a Muslim at the very uh, early time of uh, Islam and her husband followed her and they believed in uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, they were very, very good followers of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, when uh, Quraysh uh, was so uh, bad to the Muslims, was uh, torturing the Muslims. Sauda and her husband got their share of that torture. They were so harmed by the non-believers, but they both were so patient and they stood fast on the right path of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they knew that the stronger they stay fast, the stronger their belief and the stronger their iman will be uh, uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sauda and her husband uh, uh, were tortured by Quraysh. And when uh, uh, and that was similar to all the Muslims at that time. So uh, as soon as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam got the permission uh, that the uh, Muslims can uh, migrate uh, to Habasha, so Sauda and her husband were of the first people who migrated to Abyssin. And there. Uh, of course, they they lived under the kingdom of a very just king. 
he was very good to the Muslims who came, who came uh, running away from the torture of Quraysh, running away with their religion. And uh, the, uh, uh, those people who ran away and left everything behind, they left their lives, they, they, they left their homes, they left their wealth, they left everything. So they were, they left everything and they traveled through the, uh, the deserts uh, day and night. They traveled through the, the sea, the Red Sea, uh, until they got there into Abyssin. So there they got rid of that torture that they were suffering from. Uh, and when Quraysh tried to get them back, the king refused to deliver them and to give them back to Quraysh. But even though they were living peacefully, it was not uh, an easy life for, for Sauda radiallahu anha. And uh, she, 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 she felt the, um, the harshness of life away from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what, what happened there in uh, Abasin? Sauda radiallahu anha had two dreams. They were amazing dreams. And they both indicated that uh, she will be, she will get married to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what happened? What were the two dreams that she saw? She saw that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was coming towards her uh, in the dream and he stepped over her neck. So she woke up and she immediately told her husband, and he interpreted the dream that if your dream come true, then I will die and you will get married to Prophet Muhammad And she was so shocked with this interpretation, with this dream, with the interpretation. She said, and without any thinking, she said, oh, no. Uh, she meant she didn't want her husband to die. She, she was confused. She, she didn't know what to answer, actually. A few days later, she saw another, another dream. She saw that the, the moon fell down from the sky and it fell in, in her lap. Again, she woke up very surprised and she... Uh, told her husband the dream. So her husband said to her, if this comes tr come true, then I am not going to live long. I will be dying and you will be marrying Prophet Muhammad again. So that was the same interpretation of, the, of both dreams. Very uh, a very little and uh, a short time passed and a sick man got sick and it was n n a few days and he, he passed away. So Sauda was left in uh, Abyssin by herself, taking care of her children, raising her children uh, uh, very uh, 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 wisely, she she raised them on the uh, right right path. She wanted them to to be very strong, to have very strong faith. She wanted them to to be very good Muslims, so that they would fulfill the prophecy of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they. Uh, she wanted them to be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is how we mothers 
should should be raising our children. We should follow this rule. This we should we should take a Sayyida Umm al Mu'minin Sauda radiyallahu anha as our model. The, her only concern was to have to raise very good Muslims. And in this in this time during the this time that we are living in, there are so many arrows that are thrown against Muslims. But when we raise them since they are young on the right path and, and they see us as good models, then they will have enough uh, enough sustain that will help them when there are problems. So their strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them at times of calamities. This is how we should raise good children that will be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Sayyidah Sauda radiallahu anha came back to Medina. Uh, sorry, came back to Mecca. And uh, then, knowing uh, a little bit about her character, Sauda radiallahu anha was a venerable, dignified, honorable lady. She was a huge in body, she was heavy, tall, but she was so kind, so generous, so pious. And uh, she, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her. And that happened when she was over 50 years old. Now let's see how that marriage happened. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the death of Khadija radiallahu anha, he was alone taking care of the family and doing his uh, duty to bring the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there was uh, uh, one of the female companions. Her name was Khawla bint Hakim. And she was the matchmaker for this marriage that, uh, that happened. So Khawla bint Hakim uh, was the, the wife of Uthman ibn Maz'un, very loving com uh, companions to Sayyidina Muhammad, first people who, who migrated to Habash and they were from the very first people who came back also to, to be in Mecca uh, facing Quraysh and uh, uh, getting the people of Mecca who did not migrate, uh, 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 getting them stronger and uh, supporting them. So this righteous woman, Hawla bint Hakim, uh, she knew what, uh, what was uh, uh, happening to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lost his, his uh, dear wife. He lost his uncle. He, he had the problem of a ta'if. And all of that, she, uh, knowing what, what's going on, she, she was uh, strong enough just to go to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and talk to him. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, why you do not get married? So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her in a sad voice, Woman ba'da Khadija ya khawla. Who is after Khadija? Ya khawla that I can take as a wife. Khawla knew how Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam feel towards, uh, towards Khadija radiallahu anha. So she wanted to get over this, this point. And, see, and she said, if you want, there is a virgin and 
there is a, a widow. She was married previously and her husband passed away and uh, he left her, uh, her sons to take care of. So she said, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, tell me, who is the virgin? And Khawla immediately answered, she, she said, she is the daughter of the most beloved people to you. She is Aisha, the daughter of Abi Bakr. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was silent for some time. Then he said, who is the widow? And she said, Sauda bin Tuzama. So she is the one who believed in you. She followed you. And uh, she was uh, a, a very righteous woman. She, she is uh, a very uh, uh, pious woman. She is raising her children after, after her husband passed away. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, got, got uh, the feelings of mercy towards Sauda and uh, the, uh, knowing that she is the, the widow of uh, the, the, one of, the, of his uh, companions uh, who, who, who with her uh, suffered a lot until they migrated. So when she came back, she came back with her children and she, she came back to, to live with her father who was a very old man, he was blind and he wanted to do his best to take care of his uh, uh, daughter and uh, her children so that he can, yeah, I mean, he can do a little bit just to make them forget the sorrow that they were living in. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well, had so much uh, uh, merciful feelings towards her and he looked at Khawla and he said, okay, go to her and mentioned to her that I am asking her for marriage. And uh, at, at that time, Khawla said, okay, I will do Ya Rasulullah. And she suggested that he also uh, uh, propose to Aisha radiallahu anha and waits for her until she gets to the age and then he gets married. So Sayyidina, uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said, okay, and he sent Sauda, uh, he sent uh, Khawla uh, to Sauda radiallahu anha so that she would um, visit her and say what she want. So when uh, Khawla radiallahu anha came to Sauda, Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of believers, uh, she, she said to her what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has sent her for. And immediately, without hesitation, without thinking, Sauda radiallahu anha said, yes. And she was very happy with, the, with this honor that she, she had an idea about and it came true. So her dreams now are fulfilled. So what happened, uh, she said to her, go tell my father. And uh, Khawla radiallahu anha uh, came to her father. She, she, went, uh, she went to the other room and she said to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with so much barakah, so, many, so much blessings. And he said to her, what's that? And she mentioned that, uh, 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 she mentioned that Muhammad ibn Abdil, Abdillah ibn Abdil Muttalib sent me to ask for uh, to ask you to uh, for the marriage of your daughter. So he said, "Huwa kuf'un kareem." He is a good match. He is a very a very blessed man. He is a good match. But what does uh, your your friend say? So she said. Oh, she, she loved that. So 
her father approved it and he said to her uh, send, uh, let let them come and uh, the marriage will will take place inshallah so one of her brothers abdullah ibn zama uh, was not a muslim yet so when he found out that her sister got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that his sister got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took some dirt and he put it on his head and uh, he, he was so upset. Why would that happen? But later on, when he became a Muslim, he said, oh my God, how ridiculous I was just to put that dirt on my head. And uh, because... Uh, the best of the create the best of uh, people get married to my to my sister so he he was uh, <laughs> making fun of himself how how he did how he did that so Sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh lived with uh, uh, uh sauda radiyallahu anha and he lived three years with her. So one day, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he got married to uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, he, he noticed uh, that Sauda radiallahu anha was uh, taking it so heavily on herself that she said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I am an old lady and I, I don't feel uh, the uh, relation of a husband and a wife. Um, and he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, thought of divorcing her. But she said, Ya Rasulullah, I would give my night to Aisha radiallahu anha and just to keep me as your wife so when I die uh, and when I am resurrected uh, in the next life I will be resurrected as, the, as your wife and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam agreed to that and that was uh, uh, actually uh, of uh, a wisdom and how smart she was to do that. Now, um, we, we said that, uh, we mentioned that uh, uh, Sauda was uh, an, old, an old lady, uh, a heavy lady, but she was a funny lady. The only thing that would make her happy was to find a smile on the face of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, her beloved. So she would, she, she has, um, uh, 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 so that lady, this uh, Sayyidina uh, um, uh, Sauda, Umm al-Mu'mineen, she was a light-hearted woman. Despite the heaviness of her movement, she, she was a funny woman. And uh, so her wit, what, uh, we, we will talk about that. So one time, uh, Sayyida Hafsa and Sayyida Aisha wanted to tease her. And they knew that she was always so scared and so afraid of the Dajjal, the Antichrist. And one day, Sayyida Hafsa radiallahu anha and Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, the two wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so they wanted to, to uh, tease the uh, Sayyida Sauda radiallahu anha. So they kept talking to her about the Dajjal until she was so scared and she ran away and, 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 uh, and she hid in uh, a place that was not used for some time. So Hafsa radiallahu anha and Aisha were they were laughing, and suddenly Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam got in into the house. 
And he saw them laughing and he said, hey, what's going on? What have you done? So they told, they both told, told him what uh, they did and what they said to Soda and how she ran away. So when she, when Soda uh, uh, knew that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when she felt, when she heard his voice and felt that he is here, so she said, Ya Rasulullah, it is is the jal out? Is he is he here? Is he coming? So he said no. So she was she was happy and she she came out of the place she she uh, she hid in and she was uh, just uh, getting her cleaning herself of the uh, spider webs that uh, that she got over her. So this was her wit and her love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She always wanted him to be happy. She would do her best always to say anything that would make him happy. One time he was uh, praying at night and she followed him. So she said, he, it was a long uh, um, uh, prayer. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a long ruku and a long sujood. And she, when she uh, uh, finished, she said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, I was holding my nose so that it doesn't bleed. And of course, she, she wanted just to make it in a funny way that uh, you made it so long, Ya Rasulullah. And she was laughing. He was, uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was smiling. And that would make her so happy. Uh, now, if we are to talk about an important thing. So her, during her life, the, uh, we said she lived about three years with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he got uh, married again. And with all the events that happened during these three years, with everything that happened, Sauda radiyallahu anha narrated only five hadith to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Sahaba, the companions, narrated through her. They got the chain through her, through these five hadith. So uh, one time uh, she uh the, the and that was during uh the uh, uh the hajj of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when uh, when uh, sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh went to hajj he got all his wives with him and when they were in muzdalifa uh, Sauda radiallahu anha being uh, heavy and her movement is a little slow. So she asked permission of, to, from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that she would go back before uh, people would uh, uh, go back. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, asked Ibn Abbas just to take her and to take a few older ladies also, old, uh, older people, just to take them before everyone else. Another hadith that um, she narrated, uh, uh, she said, يبعث الناس حفاة عراة غرلا قد ألجمهم العرق. So on the day of judgment, people will be resurrected naked. There will be uh, um, covered with sweat and according to their deeds. And uh, but she said, يا رسول الله. Will anybody look at each other? We will be naked. So uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, For that day, that day, every man will, will be matter adequate for himself. So every... No one would be thinking of 
anybody else. No one would be looking at anyone else. Everyone will say, Nefsi, Nefsi. Everyone want to be saved. Everyone is in uh, uh, afraid of what's going to happen on that day. So no one will be looking at each other. No one. Another hadith that was narrated by Sauda Ummul Mu'mineen radiyallahu anha uh, uh, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if sheep, a sheep died before slaughtering it then the meat would be uh, uh, it's not lawful to eat that meat so that meat should be thrown away but the uh, the skin the she, the skin can be benefited from so you can just tan the skin and use it and this was the hadith uh, another hadith was that uh, one time a man came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said uh, my father is an old an old person and he cannot go to hajj he is very old he is very weak he cannot go to hajj so sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the man if your father has a debt so he got money from someone and you know that he cannot give it to give it back and if you pay it Will that be accepted by the other men? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fallahu Arham, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the most merciful. Hujja an abik, do pilgrimage, make hajj uh, with the intention uh, of your father. So do it instead of your father, with the intention that you are doing it for your father. So, subhanAllah, these, uh, uh, these were some of the points that uh, uh, Sayyida Sauda radiallahu anha uh, had with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh now if we want to go uh, a little further we can talk about how generous a sayyida sauda was so uh the there are so many uh narrations that would talk about how uh, uh, Ummul Mu'mineen Sauda radiallahu anha was she was very generous she was a giver and she would give a lot of sadaq one time Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anha uh, after uh, so, so he sent her uh, ghirara and the ghirara is uh, a pot that the money, uh, that uh, food will be put in. So he, instead of the money, he put money, he put darahim in that pot. And she said, uh, so he sent that uh, money to Sauda radiallahu anha. So she, she asked, what is this? And they told her it's money that uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an sent to you. So she said, did he put it in a pot like the one that we use for dates? And, and she did not keep one single piece of that money. She, she gave it all to the poor people. So, Sabda radiallahu anha was one of the most generous uh, 
ladies, one of the most generous females, female companions, uh, one of the most generous uh, mother of the believers in uh, at the time uh, uh, during her life. Uh, and of course, she was a very loving uh, uh, wife to her husband. She just wanted to comfort him. She took care of him and his family when she got married. She was very loved by Aisha radiallahu anha. And Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha said about, uh, about her that um, uh, she is the only woman I would love her company and I would love to learn from. She, she, Sayyida Aisha loved Sayyida Sauda radiallahu anha. So, subhanAllah, yani, uh, with these, uh, of course, uh, we uh, mentioned how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about uh, to divorce her, but she said, Ya Rasulullah, keep me. And with this, uh, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent or revealed uh, uh, ayahs of the Quran. He revealed ayah, uh, ayah 129. And um, in, in this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, revealed uh, so she said uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَإِنِ امْرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا نُشُوزًا أَوْ إِعْرَادًا فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا أَنْ يُصْلِحَا بَيْنَهُمَا صُلْحًا وَالصُلْحُ خَيْرٌ so instead of divorcing her she gave her uh, night to Sayyidah Aisha and that was a type uh, a type of settlement between the husband and the wife. And of course, out of this, so many rulings uh, are taken. And uh, uh, this was uh, uh, the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed uh, about uh, Sayyida. Uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen uh, Sauda radiyallahu anha and uh, it is uh, now uh, talking about her death uh, Sauda radiyallahu anha the honorable lady uh, died in uh, al-Madina al-Munawwara and that was around uh, the end of the uh, time of Khilafat, uh, of the Caliphate time of Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anha. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anha. And with this, she fulfilled her wish that she, she died as one of the mothers of the believers and that when they are resurrected when everyone is resur resurrected she will be resurrected as one of the mothers of the believers so with this uh with this uh, uh, uh yani it, it was just a very quick uh overview on the uh, character of sayyida umm al mu'minin khawla sayyida سودة رضي الله عنها اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين جعلها قدوة لنا We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make her as a model for us she's, she's a school We can learn a lot from uh, أم المؤمنين سودة رضي الله عنها We can learn how we can how we can as women be good husbands good wives to our husbands, righteous, righteous, good wives. 
whose aim is to please their husbands, to make their husbands happy. When, when the husband and wife are happy, then the family is happy. And when families are happy, then the society is happy. And when, when everyone is happy, then there will be productive society. There will be Islamic society. There will be a society that will go on the right path of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There will be mothers who know how to raise their children on the right path. There will be mothers who will, who will make the, the creed of their children stronger. When they see their moms as a model, then they will know what a good character is. So from Ummul Mu'mineen Sauda radiallahu anha, we will learn the values. We will learn the, the important steps, corner steps that we have to have in our lives. So, Ya Allah, Allahumma, Allahumma jma'na ma'aha ma ma fi a'la illiheen, tahta dhulli habibika al-Mustafa, Ya Arham al rahimin We ask you, Ya Allah, to gather us with Ummu al-Mu'mineen, Sauda radiyallahu anha, under the banner of our beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this, yani, uh, I would like to end our session for this week. Inshallah, we will meet next week talking about another character, about another, uh, uh, another mother of the believers. So we will be learning about from the best people about how to be, how to emulate, how to imitate these amazing characters. And until then, I'll leave you inshallah with spe special greetings and salams. And we all would send our best salam and greetings to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.